Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to the Orkney Islands and this is a Scottish beer that I have just never got around to reviewing and I'm quite disappointed at myself because it is quite a well known one. So for this one we're going to return to the Orkney Brewery and tonight we're having a taste of the Skull Splitter. So this one is a Scotch Ale, it comes at 8.5% ABV and on rate beer it has a rating of 92. Now as I always say, don't take rate beer as the gospel of of your craft beer it is a great resource and it does give you a fairly decent barometer but there are kind of several things wrong with the rating system it is american dominated as well which can skew ratings a little bit um but it's just i know from previous experiences that this is going to be a pretty good beer i've had some very good experiences with this brewery in the past so if you do want to try some scottish craft beer the orkney brewery is a place that or is one that you do want to check out so looking forward to trying this beer and as always i hope you guys enjoy my take on it so anyway as is usual with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from the orkney brewery before this must be reviews number seven or eight from them and no doubt i will add some more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state whatever it is you're interested in there are playlists there as well for the beers from different countries one for the scottish beers of course that's constantly being added to and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated but anyway to tell you a little bit about the Orkney Brewery then so this brewery is currently owned by Norman Sinclair who's an award-winning hotelier with various properties around Scotland but Norman was actually born in Orkney but moved to Fort William at a young age and worked in the family's aluminium business in 2006 though he set up a new company which was called Sinclair Breweries Limited which acquired two breweries the Orkney Brewery and also the Atlas Brewery who are from Kinloch Leven in the Highlands so the Orkney Brewery was founded in March of 1988 by Roger White at the old schoolhouse in Sandwick in Orkney and the Atlas Brewery was founded back in 2002 by Neil Cotton and it merged with the Orkney Brewery in 2004 under the name Highlands and Islands Breweries and this came about due to the retiral of Roger White and then the subsequent acquisition of shares by Atlas but Neil Cotton served as managing director of Highlands and Islands Brewery for a period of time and he drove a number of changes at the Orkney Brewery but this company of course was subsequently purchased by Sinclair Breweries in 2006 and I believe during the period that during the period following that that was when the Atlas Brewery kind of closed down and moved their production to the Orkney Brewery and of course it's the river I think it's River Leaven Ales that are now based in that place at Kinloch Leaven and they produce some pretty nice beers as well so make sure you check them out but the brewery is still the brewery in Orkney is based in the same old schoolhouse Coilu eh, which is just a mile from the Neolithic sites of course uh, Orkney and Shetland do have a massive Viking Norse heritage uh, and you want to if you go up to Orkney you do want to check out the Scarabray prehistoric site that's very very cool one of the best Neolithic sites in Europe apparently but the brewery have three employees who are involved with the brewing of the beer this is head brewer Andrew Fulton who's a graduate of the Harriet Watt brewing program which has produced a lot of craft brewers of course there's Kevin Sarling who's from South London he was involved in transport before taking up brewing in 2005 and there's also Magnus Flett who's a former farmer from Harry and he joined the brewery back in 2001 so it has been uh, this kind of little brewing family that's been doing that that's been doing the things here at the Orkney Brewery for a number of years but they're a very good brewery they've got quite a few different beers I think they've got seven or eight in the regular range and I've reviewed most of them for you here on the channel the uh, the Northern Light is a really nice seasonal beer and I think there's the the dark or the, the dark beer what's the dark beer called again I think the dark uh, night or something like that it's called but their darker beer or dark island that's what it is the dark island is a very very nice beer as well but generally all the beers that these guys produce are pretty good and i would say as i always tell you when it comes to scottish breweries there are some of the ones who brew mainly the american styles of beer and there are some of the ones who brew the traditional beers i would say the orkney brewery are one of the more traditional ones although some of their beers such as this one apparently wouldn't be out of place when it comes to the kind of a uh, new wave american style craft beers but if you want to try some traditional scottish Scottish beer, the Orkney Brewery, are one of the better ones that you're going to find in the country, so make sure you try some of their beers. So that's all you need to know about the brewery. As I always say, the links to the brewery website and stuff are in the description below, so if you want to read a little bit more about these guys, you certainly can do so. But let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then. So yeah, as you can see, really nice artwork on this one, and this is the typical Orkney Brewery artwork there. So you can see, the, it tells you on the back a little bit about the artwork actually. So it says, Skull Splitter is our strongest ale, which is named after Torfin 
Einarsson, who was the seventh Viking Earl of Orkney, sophisticated, satiny smooth, with a deceptively light character as a tribute to our colourful forebear. So, yeah, it should be a really nice beer there. You can see Torfin uh, just sitting on the front there, looking quite angry with some on the, the stones, actually, the standing stones with his battle axe in hand, but really nicely presented. There you can see the, the Orkney Brewery symbol just up here, and that, of course, is on the bottle cap as well. I absolutely love the Orkney Brewery's bottle caps. They've got some really, really nice artwork on there. It does give you some tasting notes and stuff on the back, but we'll ignore that just now since we are going to taste the beer. So this one comes in at 8.5% ABV, and like I said, it is a Scotch ale. I would guess, if you want to think about it in terms of the, the old shilling beers, you know, this one is probably going to be an, somewhere between an 80 and a 90 shilling. I don't think it will be anywhere near as low as uh, the 70 or 60s. But as I always say, when it comes to Scotch Hill, 60 and 70 shilling, you can just, I would say, take or leave. The 80 and 90 shillings are where the fun starts. And of course, that was just the old kind of... Uh, for those of you watching outside of Scotland, the 80 and 90 shilling did ref it was to do with the tax that they used to impose on the beer. Obviously, the, the tax went up on the beer as the alcohol content and malt content increased. So 60 shilling is the weakest one and up to 90 shilling is the strongest one with the most alcohol. Just for those of you that don't know that. And probably most of you watching our beer geek, so you might well do you might well know that. So yeah, as you can see, this beer's poured a really nice, it's actually a very, very red colour. It's a nice kind of rich ruby red, maybe very slight slightly chestnutty, but I would say that's mainly a nice kind of red ruby beer. I'll just bring that right up to the camera and let you see. It's got a lovely red tinge to it, and I would say, I think it's fair, I think it is definitely fair to describe that beer as a nice ruby red. You could see there was a half finger of a frothy white head on this one with a very kind of slight creamy beige tinge to it, but that's just faded away. That can sometimes happen, of course, when you've got beers that are a little bit higher in alcohol. At 8.5%, this one is starting to get up there, especially in terms of Scottish traditional beers beer, this is one of the heavier ones that you're going to come across actually of course when it comes to American style craft beers it really isn't all that heavy at all but um, as you can see there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a couple of little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head the head is faded away to be a very very thin foamy layer at the moment but it looks very very nice, as I said the thing that surprises me about this beer is just how red it actually is but it looks lovely so as you can see if I put my fingers behind the glass there is a little bit of transparency to this one but the condensation around the edge of the glass is just kind of covering that up a little bit so you'll need to take my word for it but let's have a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on oh that smells really nice yeah so one thing I've always commented on when it comes to scotch ales if you have an American Scotch ale. I've always found that they tend to be a little bit more sugary and sweet and fruity than the traditional ones are. The Scottish traditional Scotch ales, the 80 and 90 shillings, they've always got a little bit of that darker roasted character to them. A number of them have a little bit of a peaty character as well. I've always just found the American ones leads lean slightly more towards the sweetness than the traditional ones do. And I do like the American ones, you know, the Founders Dirty Bastard and all of these sorts of things. Um, but the Scottish ones, I do, for me as a Scot, I just expect a little bit of that kind of dark dark, roasty character and some of the cereally notes and a little bit of peated character as well. For me, that's what makes the best Scotch ales and I'm really interested just to see how this one turns out. But in terms of the aroma from this beer then, it's got this really dark nice roasted brown sugar element. There's definitely some treacle in there. You can get some of the lighter caramel but for me, it's really leaning towards that dark roasted brown sugar. This is a proper Scottish Scotch ale if that makes sense, but you wouldn't expect anything less when it is the Orkney Brewery. There's a bit of brown bread just kind of underpinning this one. A lot of people say there's chocolate come out of these Scotch ales. If it's done properly, you shouldn't have chocolate in them at all, I don't think. It's always about the roasted brown sugars for me. There's some woody and kind of nutty notes to this as well. Lovely little bit of earthy hop as well. It's usually English hops they use in these. We can't really grow our own hops in Scotland, although nobody's tried in a long time. But yeah, usually it's some nice earthy English hoppy notes coming out of the beer. And with this one, you can definitely pick that up. There's a wee touch of grassiness there. When you sugar the beer up, it does become a little bit more bready. It's got a little bit of that kind of sweet brown bready and cereally character to it. But really, the most prominent note in the aroma of this is definitely that big roasted brown sugar, treacle, caramel sort of thing. There's a wee bit of an almost butterscotchy note in there as well on the top end. But definitely, there's some nice woody and nutty undertones just mixing in with that bread. But overall, 
it's just a really, really nice smelling beer. When you have a beer that's high in alcohol like this and quite complex, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma for yourself before you actually get stuck into tasting the beer. But for me, this one's really quite a nostalgic beer. It definitely has that dark, roasted brown sugar quality that I would expect from a traditional uh, 90 shilling or 80 shilling beer. But yeah, great smell to this one. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. So this one is the Skull Splitter from the Orkney Brewery up on Coilu or Sandwick, wherever you want to say, on the Orkney Islands here in Scotland. Slanja. Yeah, that's a pretty damn good beer. Yeah, if you get the chance to try this, have a go at it. And the good thing about it is, it's a very high quality. These Orkney beers, in terms of the traditional breweries that you get in Scotland, Orkney, for me, are up there with the, with the best of them. Um, and th these beers, I've seen, I'm sure I've seen Skull Splitter in Australia. When I was over in Germany a few weeks ago, I actually saw this in one of the craft beer shops as well. So this is a beer, if you want a good Scotch ale, this is one that, or a traditional Scotch ale that is good. Uh, this is one that you're going to find fairly easy. For those of you who are watching across the world, this is one that you will find that is properly what a Scotch ale should be. Yeah, that's really damn good actually. So, as I always say with these slightly darker beers, sugar it around your palate and just let your whole mouth adjust to it before you start analysing the flavour too much because you will get a lot more out of it that way. But with this one, it has everything that I would want from the Scotch Ale. So you can feel there's a little bit of a slightly uh, just light malt character that goes right across the middle of the palate. The, this one isn't actually too heavy in terms of the, the breadiness. Normally I would expect a wee bit more breadiness from it um, with some of the other Scottish Scotch Ales that I've had before. But I can see what they were meaning on the label. This one's deceptively light in terms of its body. But it's got a nice little bit of that brown bready character. You can feel there's a little bit of a roasted element to it as well. You can feel it's got this kind of roasted grainy character just underpinning it as well. But on top of that, you've got these really dark roasted treacle kind of notes. It's got a lot of dark roasted brown sugar in there. And that kind of, that once you get over the little breadiness, you feel those roasted elements just pushing their way out. It's not quite black malt. I would say it has a little bit of that, it has a little bit of that almost kind of charred character to it, but there's a lot of brown sugar sweetness there right in the middle of the tongue. Some of the lighter caramels right in the middle of the palate there as well, but the darker treacle elements are just kind of sneaking out towards the edge of your palate too. But it's a really, really nice beer this one, and it's it, as they were saying on the label, it is deceptively light for a Scotch ale. But that's really good. Yeah, and um, as you move further into the aftertaste with this one, you will start to pick up a little bit of the kind of woody elements coming out of this one. There's a wee bit of a nutty character as well towards the front of the palate in the centre. It mixes in with the slightly uh, sweeter caramel note that the beer has, but overall, it's quite. It's mainly the woody note that's coming out as you move further into the aftertaste for me, and some of those roasted brown sugars are lingering in there as well. This one's definitely more of a roasted Scotch ale than anything else, but this is definitely one of the best Scottish Scotch ales that you're going to find. The other really good one that I've come across is the Old Parochial from a Tempest Brewery. That one, uh, that one has a little bit more of a kind of new craft edge to it, but it still retains the tradition. It's got more peated malt in it. This one is more kind of straight up uh, with the brown sugars. So if you like, you can do that with the Scotch Ales. You can have them a little bit smoked at the same time, but you can have them more leaning towards the sugary notes. And this one for me is more in that category where it's a little bit of the, the roasted brown sugar that's taken the, this, you know, that's, that's underpinning the beer. But that's really good. I do like how this one comes across. So in the back corners of the palate then, you can feel a little bit of earthiness in there. And it has a little bit of bitterness, but overall it's quite a smooth earthiness. As you come along the front sides of the palate, you'll feel that earthiness just kind of smoothing out and come along there. There's a wee bit of a slightly grassy and floral character. It's definitely grassy around the very front curve of the palate. And then just as you go behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you're going to get this nice little oily bubble where these juicy fruity esters come out. And that's definitely leaning towards the kind of uh, candied fruit esters for me. So 
So yeah, with this one, there's a nice little bit of that juicy red fruity note in there. It reminds me a little bit of these kind of Haribo Star Mix sweets. It's got a little bit of that kind of candied red fruit thing that it's very similar to the little heart shaped sweets that you get but there is a little bit of that slightly sharper raisiny and kind of plummy note coming out of the beer as well and it does get a little bit medicinal as you go further and further into the taste it has a little bit of herbal character on the hoppy side of things as well and that's what I like about the scotch is I do enjoy a little bit of that kind of medicinal quality but overall this is a really really quite nice beer and as I said in terms of the scotch ales it really leans towards that dark kind of a uh, roasted brown sugar element rather than having a little bit of the peated malt in there as well so I have to admit I really like this one I think this would actually be beautiful as a cask ale. It's very very smooth and like they were saying it is quite light on the body. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one then I would say this is this is just on the bottom end of full bodied. It is a little bit lighter than you would normally expect for a Scotch ale, but it does have that typically big oily mouth feel to it. The carbonation in this one's very, very smooth. It, as I said, it is a little bit oily, but it does have a wee bit of wetness to it. It is a little bit kind of uh, as they were saying, I guess the best way to describe the body is deceptively light because it is a, it is quite really quite drinkable this one which is unusual for a beer of this strength and as I said in terms of Scottish traditional beer this is really quite high in alcohol uh, but compared to some of the, the kind of new craft beers and stuff you can get it's not that high um, in terms of the malt base it's quite sweet but at the same time it does have some of these dark roasted elements to it as well but it balances out quite nicely and as you go further into the aftertaste you'll get more of the sweetness than anything else the hops are quite smooth but there is a little bit of bitterness particularly in the back corner of the palate from that earthiness and then there's some nice juicy fruit to it as well but overall I think it's a really quite interesting beer and I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that it's taken me so long both to try this beer and to review it for you guys here on the channel but in terms of a traditional Scottish ale it gets a big thumbs up from me and I do like how even within this very traditional style there is a little bit of diversity I mean the Tempest Old Parochial is the other Scotch ale that I would really recommend that people try that one as I said leans more towards the kind of peaty side of things but it has all of these nice sweet sugary notes in it whereas this one's a little bit more dark and, uh, and roasty at the same time so there is a, a significant bit of diversity in the Scotch ale style, but the American ones do tend to be a little bit more sweet than anything else. The traditional Scotch ales are a little bit more darker and roasty and sometimes peaty in their flavours as well. But this is a cracking beer and a very good rep representation of, Sc of traditional Scottish uh, 80 and 90 shilling beers. So if you get the chance to try it, I recommend that you do. And for those of you watching abroad, I guess this is probably the most easily available or most widely available classic Scotch ale that you're going to get. So yeah, the Skull Splitter from Orkney Brewery up on Coilu or Sandwich on the Orkney Islands here in Scotland. Make sure you try this beer because it is pretty damn good. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Uh, do check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Orkney Brewery as well. Hopefully I can return to these guys in the near future. I think it's been two or three years since I've reviewed one of their beers actually before this one. But it's been really cool to return to them after quite a wee absence actually. But make sure you try the Skull Splitter if you get the chance. The other Scotch ale I would recommend for you, like I said, is the Old Parochial from Tempest. And the Old Jock from Brought Nails is pretty good as well. But this one's really good and make sure you check it out. So until the next time, slander just now and I will catch you guys very soon. The Skull Splitter, a Scotch ale at 8.5% from the Orkney Brewery on the Orkney Islands here in Scotland. Slander just now.